Hey guys, this is Andy from WCC here, and today we have a very special episode for you. Someone that you may have may not seen before. It is the one and only Solemn Vanguard, and alongside him today we have our very own Kevin Cho of WCC. These two just finished our uh, Worlds 2018, and they decided to take a very very interesting deck for Worlds. The deck they decided to choose was Great Nature. Why did you guys decide to take this deck? Um, basically, it completely cucks NLK. You auto win against Geese, and every normal matchup goes great as well. The only thing you don't want to get is like high rolled by Hazel, but like no no deck can survive a really high roll Hazel anyway. And there's absolutely nothing you can do against Hazel with any matchup realistically, unless you're playing something that can also skip to a grade three to counter and even then that's counterproductive because they'll be striding on you first. So we decided to take the deck that had the absolute best matchup against NOK, the other the other half of the meta realistically. Yeah. And uh, it still has a pretty solid matchup against Skopal uh, because of some techs and some good draw power and recovery. Well let's take a look at both your decks. Alright so I guess pretty obvious is just the new Leopold. He gives you free field. Um, if you run Homily, I don't know if you did, but like you can check it, you get you get it for free or you draw into it. Uh, just free field and creates Excel circles. I guess that's like the same for you. Yeah. And then I ran four Rhino because he like auto wins you with Zoa. If you don't know the combo, this Monoculus and Zoa is like almost unguardable unless you have four G guards or like a gigantic hand with grade ones or something. I ran four because even on like a regular Bolaro turn. If you swing with him multiple times with Crayon, these days, because of V, loads of your shield is in grade 0 anyway, with like the 15k shields in, and so forth. Even if you just do your Bolaro turn, this guy can already kill on like against regular decks when Zoa is not an option. As for me, I, I still ran the 4 Leopold, obviously, because this is like the absolute best great nature grade 3 right now. Like He just gives way too much free advantage and pressure if you're going first. But I decided to run slightly less of a uh, Rhino because you do have ways to search it out and you have ways to filter your deck upon G card. But so I ran one Big Belly. This card is able to further your combos on Bolero turns or any kind of any kind of pressure or finish turns or for beating down. And uh, you can also search it out even though it's a one of. Yeah, it's true. It's like a fetchable Crayon Tiger with Mika Saburo. Yeah. I considered that at one point, but my, my main fear basically was like seeing your rhinos go into damage or like one of them and then trying to spangle into like your last copy. But I do really like the big belly. I, I, I suspected that there would be a lot of Ezo uh, and as such, this card is still great, but because its main utility is for the Zoa play, mm -hmm. it really just wasn't as important for me uh, as this card. Yeah, makes yeah. sense. So yeah, that's that's about it. It's they're they're still very important. Uh, on to grade two. So obviously your four crayon tiger. Honestly, against NLK you like never ever use this because you don't want to run out of ca counter blast. But the powerful thing is just it wins you every other matchup. Like restanding a rhino is just way too good. It's also why you run like the big belly since you can fetch it with Mike and then also restand your rhino or whatever you put on the Excel circle. Really, this card is probably like. In a normal meta, when you play normal Vanguard, I'd say this is like the best card in the deck. But then now we're in this really weird spot, so it doesn't like get the spotlight all the time. I ran three Ocelot. It gives plus 4k to something and then kills it at the end of the turn. It's like a better Binoculus Tiger from the old days. But what it does is it turns on Mike Saburo early. So that makes it so either you draw your Leo Palt or you fetch your Leo Palt. So you run actually like eight Leo Palts. And then I ran the two Bobo. Just in case an LK player was really just keeping me at absolutely zero and somehow like getting his loop at five damage and I didn't survive or something, I wanted to be able to turbo, turbo into Zoa. And what you can also do is like if they kept you at zero damage and they're gonna swing with their Vanguard once, you could um, all Mirage a Bobo out and that way they will still hit because their Balam is like bigger than this, but then still give yourself one damage. So you go from zero to two and then you can Zoa them next turn. But yeah, that didn't really... In, in playtesting it came up against like really, really savvy NLK players. But generally, it didn't. That's why you only run two. As for me, I ran a very a very different grade two line. Yeah, I saw. Yeah. I only run three Crayon Tiger because just as Solemn said, this card is this card is absolutely great against 
any deck that won't damage an IU and you won't be struggling for counter blast against. Mm -hmm. But that's not really what premium as a format is. Yeah. A lot of the time you will be receiving damage and I until their combo. So I still only ran three because uh, Go Paladin, you, you'll still need uh, st to apply some pressure. And against random decks, uh, Geese, if they give you one counter blast theoretically and you can counter charge it guaranteed or something like that. But the real star of my deck was I ran four bicolor bike Baku. And three compass line. Four. Four four compass lines, sorry. Both of these are both of these retire at the end of your turn, except bicolor Baku has a condition. As long as you are not successful, you do not you retire and send it to the bottom of your deck. But if you do reach success, you cannot retire. So but that's pretty easy to play around because success only procs when your rear guard hits twenty one. So you just if you did get a trigger that you couldn't control like a front trigger, you would just not boost. Uh, but it's just very important to get to retire. Alternatively, 11k bodies are very strong against Ezo. If you're on an 11k body and they attack you for 19 or so, or 12 or whatever, all of their 19s immediately can't hit if you get one V trigger, which I ran 12 of, so it's a decent chance. Uh, a lot of great twos are pretty much vanilla in this deck, so I just figured to run as many 11ks as I could. Yeah, makes makes sense. At one point, I also ran the bicolor Baku, like instead of the Ocelot, because as you said, like it really ruins Ezel if you get that defensive trigger. But my main thing was like I assumed a lot of world's players would be playing NLK instead of Ezel, because I feel like it's the best deck in format. It's it's more consistent than Ezel. But seeing as how worlds turned out, it was probably smarter to um, go for the bicolor Baku instead. But then it actually didn't end up mattering because it was just a bricky sack fest. <laughs> yeah, okay. as, as it's not something you can play around even with yeah. some ingenuity, unfortunately. So next up we had the uh, four Monoculus Tiger. Overall you use this, as you uh, as I said before, for the Zoa combo. So you go Rhino, this Zoa and you auto win. But I ran four instead of like three or two as some people may do. Because again I was really afraid of losing them out or having to ride them or something like that. And then not being able to spangled into them. And also it's 10k shield. So even against Ezel where you don't plan on using Zoa, you can still just guard for more than anything else you would run over this. Um, then next up I run 4 Mike. Basically, apart from Kaon Tiger, maybe the best card in the deck, you just fetch literally anything you need. So since this card you want to draw into and then with him you can fetch like your Rhino and your Leopold and Zoa is almost always live. Also get your correct right target, also fetch your Rhinos for any other turn, it's just really really nuts. Um, then I ran 4 Honolly. I really, really, really wanted to seek this card. If I had this and any other grade one against NLK, I would just write the other grade one, call this behind, and that already sets them one turn behind because they need to Balam no matter what. Um, also, a 6k body, it may sound weird, but it's actually great against Ezel because you can ride this boy and then swing for six under their shit so they don't have the counter blast to Vivian or make their Gar Garrett huge. And then also against Ezel, if they high roll really hard but you have this, they still can't glorious raining you for like 12, no not 12 attacks, but like 7 or 8 or something nutty like that. Um, then I had room for one stride folder. I really wanted to run more but I didn't have the room and that's because, I should probably say this now anyway because it's kind of like part of grade ones I guess. Uh, the grade zero Bikun, this card is just, this makes NLK free. Like they can literally be four damage boboing me and I would still survive with ease because this together with Bikun, you spangled, you draw 15 cards, you have plenty of draw PGs and this and just any NLK loop looks just free and then you Zoa them and you win. I definitely agree Solomon that um, I was considering this card as well. It's just great right now in the yeah. format overall. Um, even against golds. Even against golds. You commit it early and that's one less attack the entire game you have to deal with and that that could save you. As for me, I didn't run it unfortunately. I ran quite a different grade one lineup. Oh yeah. Yeah. I still ran the four monoculus. This card's absolutely amazing. 10k shield, because uh, it's a V V card and the more shield's great. Uh, the effect is amazing as Solomon explained. It's just it's just too staple of a card. And for Mike if you're playing Great Nature and you're not playing Mike and you have access to retire cards, I, I don't know what you're doing. This card <laughs> this this card can let you run lower grade three lineups. Absolutely nuts. 
But outside of that, I ran Duck Bill. My boy. Duck Bill. <laughs> so I had I had a I had I was able to commit a total of seven theoretical cards turn two. Well obviously I couldn't call seven, but um I had seven in the deck that could filter for advantage and as you can see <laughs> I'm not good at that. As you can see, I have a lot of ways to proc retire skills uh, on turn two. So I want to make the best use of it. Alternatively, if you have both of these, you have more attackers to attack your opponent's field. And that really matters against Ezo because you can try to slow them down the best. And as I said, Ezo was my main priority. Alternatively, I ran two Animal Clip Lesser. So this was just a tenth retire card that I had on turn two realistically. I just really wanted to be able to proc my seven Duckbill or you know Mik Mikasaburos. Uh, I did not want to end up in the scenario in which I couldn't because just just a heads up, I do run the draw starter. I do not run telescope rabbit. Yeah that's that's a pretty important one. Yeah so I wanted more ways to proc retire so and then finally I ran Two stride enablers. Like you, you can't you can't fit very many many of them. Yeah, that's pretty sad. Unfortunately, I really like the duck bill. <laughs> not not like in the in the religious cultish way that I usually do, but just the fact that you get to fill a field and then one retire often turns into like two or three cards. My my biggest fear with it was more so that I didn't have room for Honolulu anymore, and so NLK would become like slightly less free. Hmm. But I guess seeing as how worlds turned out, uh, not, not a lot of people really ran it in the first place. So then uh, we have four crits only because I went for eight draw. Reason for that is that Spangle turns every one draw into two draws. And so I would often have a very large hand, also more chances to draw into heals or into bikuns. Um, and then a Spangled, you like Spangled for 8, double heal, and then you draw 16, you draw your entire deck, you can survive anything, and of course, uh, 4 heals. I ran only V triggers because I was really prepared to see Azel, but so seeing like one of these instead of the V, instead of the old heal, um, like saves your butt. But the thing is, then you really have to watch out with resources, so that's something to keep in mind as well. And I guess I should say my starter was a Telescope Rabbit, which made it so I needed less of like the, the retire enablers like you did. I definitely really liked uh, Solemn Vanguard's lineup and it really shows that it's more focused on the Zoro combo which, yeah. is, which is really important though because that is pretty much your only win condition. So mine was slightly different. I didn't run only four crits. I ran five and three fronts. Now this is because you can't ent you can't Zoa a go paladin player consistently because yeah. eventually they do have an out that we'll, we'll explain a little later on maybe yeah and so you actually need to lay some pressure on them at some point so i didn't want to add in the extra draws i want to have a way to consistently kill them so i wanted to drive check more pressure triggers so, yeah. and then i ran you know vpgs you still you still need some form of defense obviously and i ran this heal now I really want to run the V heal just like Solemn, but I kept running into soul issues until I added this. And even after that, I needed Counter Blast. Because occasionally, a lot of your G guards actually use Counter Blast. So I didn't want to have to use my only Counter Blast when I needed it for Zoa. And I needed to use a Spangled or something. So I wanted to be able to make any of my Spangles free or any of my G guards free. Because if you use any of your counter blasts, you're gonna get restricted. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I really wanted to run it, but I was so afraid of not getting mic live that I ran this instead. Mm. So I guess I should get into the G zone. I think this will be I, actually no. I think I said they would be more similar, but it's not true. So uh, four Excel circles, the fancy schmancy ones, mm. and then we get into uh, three Belarl. I actually can't use three because I only have two souls, so I actually have to re-ride. So if I'm going into this, it's usually the third one. It's usually because like Gize is like super slow or something like that. Um, but yeah, usually two is enough to kill almost anyone. Um, I also ran the GB8 for the reason that 
It's basically a weaker Bolaro that doesn't cost a soul, so if I didn't have the soul, I usually would have spangled a bit already and then I would be able to go into this as like a weaker Bolaro. Uh, then one Fernigas. This card is really, really nutty, but I don't think a lot of people know it. So you retire your own board and then you draw a bunch of cards, get all your resources back. But so when NLK is playing slow, this will allow you to recycle your Mike Saburos. Um, if you are able to call multiple Mike Saburos, during this turn, you not only draw the amount of cards that you called, but then you also get all your fetches off, which is really sick. But you do have to watch out because deck out is a real issue when you run so many Spangled in this. But this card, you need at least one. At one point, my idea against NLK was actually to run two and never ever attack and just keep like recycling this. But that wasn't valid when they actually uh, keep swinging. Then this boy, um, I don't think many people see this coming. Essentially, when I don't have Honolulu early, I need to strike this because I need to be able to flip for free and Bolaro costs a soul because I plan on drawing into Honolulu to then all mirage the Honolulu out but if I went into Bolaro first then I am already minus one soul meaning I wouldn't be able to Zoa after all mirage because this costs a soul, all mirage costs a soul that's minus two, I only have two so then I have zero soul so I needed, if I didn't have Honolulu, I needed to go into this so that if I draw it I can all mirage it out to then um, still be at GB3 then next up this, um, in case of deck out, in case of all my rhinos going away, sometimes against a slower NLK player or something like this, I would go into this. Then uh, one Leopold Chaser, this guy is like the spice of all spice, for the reason that um, if you don't know what it does, you swing, you choose a target, the target dies at the end of the turn and you fetch the same target to your hand. And so that didn't matter back in the day because, well, it's just a bad effect. But these days, Leopold can check top four. And so if you found a heal or a bikun, you would be able to call it and use him to get it to your hand at the end of the turn. So this way, when you go up against an LK and you didn't draw into heals, you could actually see a heal off him, go into chaser and get a heal to your hand to then like destroy them next turn. Um, that's a pretty spicy tech that I found on Cardfight Wiki. Yeah? Then uh, Zoa, of course, Wincon. Uh, this boy to counter charge because that's a real issue in the deck. Al Mirage to either cheese out the Honolulu or the Bobo. Um, yeah, Honolulu or Bobo. Uh, this is like a plot maker for free. It's always, always live because of the Excel circle. Uh, Sankalpa is a huge card. It does cost a counter blast, so only really relevant in something like Ezel where you have way too much counter blast and then you draw. And then uh, three Spangled for the simple reason that. Using three after each other doesn't happen often, but sometimes what you will do is your opponent will attack, you only have one heal, you spangled, you draw an entire new hand, and then you have two heals, so then you spangled two, to two times in a row again, and then you basically went through your entire deck, you stop all your counter blast apart from two, um, survive the NLK loop, and then destroy them. I had pretty much the same Jesus known as uh, Solomon Vanguard. <laughs> 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 I had three Beloros, you're not really going to use any more than two. The card is just nutty. Zoa, just for the play, this this is the best play of the deck. Refreshing your deck. This was just flip for. Yeah. Uh, this bad boy. I, I actually couldn't get a Leopold Chaser. Oh. Even even if I wanted to test with it. Yeah. Unfortunately, I did not have the time. This was just in case I ran into any rogue they were tired, like Kagero, if they wanted to try to counter in, okay. GB it's pretty spicy if you can make it to it. Yeah. Big Belly is actually pretty strong because you can you have a lot of guard restrict and you can theoretically force them to take it just like the Zoa play but for one counter blast. Does that come up often? Not not quite often. I see. Not not, not very often. Though. Counter charge G guard, big G guard against Gridor it's pretty solid. Yeah, that's true. Draw a draw draw one card in the medium and two Spangle. In before Spangled buyout. No, please. <laughs> I don't own the deck yet. Oh, it's not yours? No. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Alright. Now, now that we have gone through both of your decks, right, how were your uh, experience with them at Worlds and compared to what you expected? Fucking ass. <laughs> yeah. Go first? Yeah, basically I ran into Azel and I was like, okay, Azel, I still have a 70% win rate. Then he like drops the dice, it's a six. I'm like, okay, kill me. Um, then he gets the bow mains, okay, fine. And like, I can still survive after that. Like some defensive triggers um, and then the stabilization of Great Nature. Like Great Nature actually has one of the best matchups against Azel, but then I had six grade threes in hand by turn three and I knew like, yeah, this is over. As for me, I actually ran into a very rogue deck. I ran into Victor. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, Vic Victor. And 
I didn't. I, I figured I would try to lower his hand as far possible so yeah. that he wouldn't be able to champion. But he just took all of my attacks and I got absolutely no triggers. Oh. It, it was it was just very unfortunate. Other than that, I played some. I played one Ezo that I won against and I lost against the second Ezo just before top eight. Unfortunately, that made me four two. And the victor, the victor matchup actually sent me too far to make it in top eight. Yeah, because he didn't win anything else. Yeah. Uh, ah, yeah. that sucks. He, he absolutely did not win anything else. Yeah. <laughs> but, but uh, as okay, I still do not regret the deck choice. I thought it was a very good one. Yeah. Yeah, like we have a lot of advantage in the early game against Ezo, so that's pretty great. We have a really good win con against NOK. We don't have to give them any counter blast. Mm -hmm. So, and that, those are really the two big decks. And if anybody had brought any form of Geese deck. We are an Excel deck, so we're automatically one attack further against a no damage trigger deck. So you don't even have to zone with them. You could just drop Belaros and you're probably yeah. gonna win. And beyond that, what Belaro also like empties your own field, so they're forced to give you damage anyway. Exactly. Unless they don't want any like extra draws, but then they die either way. Like Geese is so free, it's actually pathetic. Not not even on the radar. Yeah. But but yeah, um it was still a good good tournament. Unfortunately, as it was Nothing you can do about, right? Yeah. I just didn't really expect so much Ezel, but in the end, I kind of ex like I expected to see like maybe 30% NLK, 20% Ezel, but the problem is there's nothing you can do about Ezel anyway. You could build your entire deck to counter Ezel, but if you don't see your defensive triggers and they high roll, you just die. Yeah, it's it's not a great part of the premium format, but nonetheless, it was a good tournament, I think. Um, still got to meet a lot of really great players. We got to meet and discuss this great nature deck yeah. <laughs> that we both decided on and yeah. some spice. Hashtag ban Bowmains 2019. Later Kyrf, man. <laughs> Just in premium, later yeah. Kyrf. Well, we, we know that the, uh, there's going to be a ban that's coming out very, very soon. Yeah. Uh, any thoughts on what do you think is going to be? You can go first. Um, the assassin combo definitely has to go. It's been it's been a problem even before NOK okay came out to be honest. Yeah. You had the demagogue assassin play that was pretty pretty cancer and this it, it just inhibits the whole format. Like they no counter blast deck can be very strong right now. And that that, that was true prior to this, but it is especially true now with it and Geese. So, yeah. Gold Paladin I do feel like Cure f can't be the starter. Yeah. This, this, this just is actually unfair that it's, there is zero counterplay that can be done. But until that happens, until something happens about it, it'll just keep demolishing the tournaments. Yeah, and it's also really easy to play. That makes it way worse. Like back in the day, Wiseman Loop was very, very strong, but it was so hard to get right that at least it was fair. But Gold Paladin, you can. Like I've given it to Chris earlier so that he like could learn all the, the things before commentating and he destroyed me just the first time piloting it because I just said do this and this and it works. It's so damn easy. It's just ridiculous. But it won't be banned because yeah. they have to sell Miyagi. Oh. <laughs> so like fr from, a, from a company perspective they won't ban it but they really have to. I think they're just gonna let people find more consistent decks hopefully and Deci hopefully decide not to play those decks. Maybe play the leaders coming up or something. Great nature, because it's great best nature. deck in the format. It's still, it's still a great <laughs> deck, yeah. Alright. Alright, thank you to the both of you. Thanks for joining us. And uh, lastly, any shout outs? Mm. Shout out to Albert for helping me discover this deck and that's about it. I mean, I let's let's go. I'm shout out to Norman Irfan. He helped me prepare so badly. Like he had to pilot NLK for at least 200 games. So poor guy. Thanks so much for that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the main thing. There's other people who also helped, like Ben from Yellow Card, Jay, uh, Chris from Different Fight, my locals. But that's basically it. All right. Thank you very much. And hopefully we'll see you at Worlds again. Hopefully. <laughs>